Hey again, loopers, it's Kim Russo with America's Great Loop Cruisers Association. This is leg four of our Great Loop aboard the Perch. Here's our cruising overview. We left the anchorage marked on your electronic charts as Sands Key 2, headed for Fort Lauderdale today. It should be about a five or so hour day. This was deliberate and we left at first light because there is some foul weather predicted for this afternoon, mostly high winds. And it is also Saturday, and many loopers avoid at all costs going through areas like Miami and Fort Lauderdale, which is on our agenda for today, on the weekends, because there is often such substantial small boat and large boat traffic that it can make for a pretty harrowing day. So we left at first light, wanted to get ahead of the weather, hopefully ahead of any boaters who were out there, and there's a small craft advisory for the afternoon. So definitely wanted to get going, so we did. The morning's cruise was on the open water of Biscayne Bay through Biscayne National Park, and we could see Miami, the beautiful skyline in the distance, just about from the time we left. Obviously very far in the distance, uh, hazy, so difficult to see, but you could just make it out. And as we continued on, of course, Miami started to rise in the distance. Really exciting for me. I like the excitement of cities. So approaching it was a lot of fun. So we went under this bridge and that was kind of the last open water we're gonna see for a little while because now we're in the uh, kind of more enclosed intracoastal waterway. We are headed through Miami. So we've got the skyscrapers on our port side. We've got Miami Beach on our starboard side. And most of the bridges on this leg, we can clear without having to have them open. There's a couple of exceptions. We did have to have the Venetian Causeway West Bridge open. Um, it was at about 13 feet. So we had to wait about 10 minutes for that. They opened that bridge at this time on the hour and half hour. So 10 minute wait, certainly not bad. We passed some pretty large mega yachts on the way. Uh, this boat, we looked up on AIS because it seemed extremely long and it was uh, shown as 358 feet on the AIS. Both of us were pretty surprised by that length. A lot of this area is a no wake zone from November 15th through April 30th every year because of manatee. So make sure you pay attention to those no wake signs and the specific dates when you're coming through. Continuing on, it was just kind of a beautiful cruise, not very much boat traffic and that may have been partly that po folks were staying off the water because of the small craft advisory for the afternoon. We did eventually come to the next bridge that we could not clear, that is the Broad Causeway Bridge. They open on 15 and 45 past the hour. It was showing about 19 feet, um, 18 or 19 feet. We may have been able to clear, but we chose not to chance that, and, and I think we waited maybe 20 minutes for that bridge. So again, not too bad. The manatee zone, the, the no-wake zone for the manatee, actually ended for a bit at the other side of the Broad Causeway Bridge, so we were able to go back to up to our normal cruising speed of about eight knots, which is what we're trying to stick to, particularly in light of fuel prices. As we got closer to Fort Lauderdale, we came through the port of the Everglades. Uh, you can see all these cruise ships here, which was pretty amazing to see. Uh, not sure if these are kind of wet stored here until the cruise industry picks up again post COVID, but with the exception of like one of these cruise ships, there was no sign of anybody aboard them. So uh, just almost seemed like a graveyard for cruise ships, but hopefully if that's something you like to do on that type of cruising, that industry may pick up again and hopefully those boats will be on the move. Shortly after that, the traffic picked up substantially. You can see this little beach party going on here in the middle of the river, and that's actually right where the intracoastal splits with the new river. And we are taking a couple of miles side trip up the new river into the heart of Fort Lauderdale to arrive at our marina for the night. We are headed to Cooley's Landing Marina, which is owned by the city of Fort Lauderdale. Very reasonably priced. I think in the end we ended up paying $140 for a two night stay that includes electric and we are on a 41 foot silver tin. So I think it worked out to about $1.50 a foot plus electric. So very reasonable stop and it really is in the heart of everything there is to see and do. So check out our other video on Great Loop Lifestyles, which is where I'll show you what there is within a mile of Cooley's Marina in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, 
plenty of close bridges on the new river on the way through. This is a windy, twisty, turny river, and there was a big paddle wheeler in front of us, and it was really interesting to watch all that going on, but also a bit harrowing because the wind had picked up by this time. As you can see, the boat traffic had picked up by this time, and we were seeing some gusts up to 30 miles an hour. So a little bit nail biting, pulling into the slip. Uh, thankfully, went very well. Captain did a fabulous job. We got tied up and started to enjoy what there is here around the marina in Fort Lauderdale. So that was day four of our Great Loop adventure. Here's our Nebo log for today's trip. As you can see, we were underway for about six hours and we went a distance of 40 miles. We were averaging 6.6 .6 knots. So that's a little slower than we have typically been averaging. That's indicative of a lot of the bridge weights and the no wake zones that we had on this leg. So our max speed was uh, just under nine knots, also a pretty slow day for what we're used to, but you can take a look at the overall track and you can see that's how we made our way from our anchorage to Fort Lauderdale. Thanks for watching. We'll be back with our next leg shortly.